Well, we've talked and talked about sustainability for years now. And the reason we're doing it, and it's evident for us now, is because we screw the planet. And even though we know that, every day we keep abusing and abusing and abusing the planet. But what happens when you come from a very, very, very tiny island where, as according to her words, sustainability is survival, when you don't have water, you don't have electricity, and the little you have, you have to share it very carefully because it could run over and you could die. So for a person that comes from an island where sustainability is survival, this person was determined to make youth commit into that. And then when she heard about the Rio 20 summit, she knew that she wanted to be there, she needed to be there, but not alone, and she got the volunteer support and she created a youth mission for the Rio summit coming from a tiny, tiny island. And why? Because they know the answers. They want to tell the world that yes, there are ways to make this little blue sphere, the beautiful sphere we call home, a sustainable sphere. Let's welcome and give a round of applause to Barca Mose from the island of Mauritius. Thank you for the introduction, Oscar. Um, hi, my name is Barca, and like Oscar said, I come from the tiny paradise island of Mauritius. And I want to take you there for the next 30 seconds, okay? Close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let the sound of your collective breath become the sound of the sea. Okay, deep breath. But don't you dare start snoring. Okay, now imagine sinking into blue crystal clear water. Feel all the weight of your body lift as you become infinitely light and free under the water. And now imagine discovering a world, an amazing world full of colors and life and movement as you set sight on one of nature's greatest creations, coral reefs. Picture the gentle swaying of the polyps, the quick darting movement of thousands of funny little fish and the multitude of colors, pink and red and yellow and white and the golden dapple light of the sun through the water. Open your eyes. Now, why am I telling you this? We're here to discuss the future of the world. We're here to discuss the 387 parts per million of carbon dioxide which have been released in the atmosphere. We're here to talk about the one billion people who live in abject poverty, about the fossil fuels which are still underlying our politics and the relentless rise of the sea level and sea temperature and overexploitation of our biosphere and the bleaching of the corals in our planet and coming from an island, coral reefs signify beauty, life and fragility for me. These complex ecosystems can house millions of organisms. They protect coastlines, they provide food, they provide revenue. They're also important indicators of the health of the planet. So it tells us something about the state of the world that over 60% of the world's coral reefs are under stress from human activities. It is also an alarm bell that the obsession with fossil fuels might destroy such beauty, as is the case with the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. For the past three months, I realized that there were three barriers to change. The first is a flawed economic policy where we place monetary growth above everything else. We're scared of attaching value to that which cannot be quantified, for example, happiness. Secondly, I noticed that a gap in dialogue between the elder generation and us, youth, is extremely damaging for sustainable development. I have met decision makers who refuse point blank to consider that future generations matter. At the Rio Plus 20 summit, where our decision makers were supposed to take positive decisions for the planet, I remember being told off by delegates for suggesting that youth wanted the end of fossil fuel subsidies. The third barrier to change is 
a horrible absence of confidence in most of us that, as an individual, we can make a difference. It's easy to be overwhelmed by the scary figures. It's also easy to think that it's the responsibility of someone else to put things right. Sustainable development, above everything else, is a choice. It's a choice of our consumption, it's a choice of our lifestyle, and it's a choice of what we here stand for, particularly for island states like mine, like Oscar said, it's a choice for survival. Nothing stops anyone from taking a step for sustainability, whether by a simple action such as using less paper or just turning off the lights, it's so easy to respect the planet. When I was younger, I remember my grandma used to tell me, don't pick flowers after dark. The trees are sleeping, do not disturb them, she would say. At the bottom of this Mauritian superstition lay the belief that every life is worthy of respect. Has this sort of respect disappeared? I think not. At the Rio Plus 20 summit, which ended up as a fail for all the hype, I was moved by the energy that passionate young people like you demonstrated as they fought to alter the status quo that our world leaders, the old ones, were determined to keep. We here are already a network of creative minds. So this, this is our wake up call for all of us here to be the spark that ignites the love, the respect and the action for our planet. We here are all the young leaders in our own rights, and we can achieve what multilateral politics has failed to do. We have all done exceptional things. Our challenge now, our challenge now, is to inspire other people, young and old. No complacency and waiting for things to change is not an option. Thank you very much.